Hi everybody and welcome back to another screencast of Total OS Today. Well for this screencast I thought I would take a more uh, serious look at the Windows versus Linux debate for 2011. If you recall on one of my previous videos I did do a video on Windows versus Linux 2011, specifically Windows 7 versus Zorin OS 4. But that was done more for fun, you know, tongue-in-cheek, somewhat sat satirical look at Windows 7 and Zorin OS 4. Uh, I did include some facts in it based on my experience, but it was done for laughs, it was done for fun, and I did make a few of my f friends laugh, and that was the purpose of that video. Now, that being said, I thought for this one I would take a more serious look, and I wanted to point out uh, 10 things about Windows versus Linux, 10 facts, conceptions, or misconceptions about the operating systems, again, based on my experiences. So let's get started. All right, number one. <clears throat> if a virus infects a Windows machine, the most important system files will be affected, sometimes crashing the whole system. Linux, from what I understand, is based on a clustered system, and the virus will only affect the area limited to the cluster and not the whole operating system. Uh, this is my understanding of how Linux works versus Windows. Now, of course, if you are running any type of Windows operating system, I highly recommend that you use an antivirus. It's not generally required to have an antivirus with Linux. It's not impossible to get a virus, but I do not use a Linux antivirus. So for this I would say Linux has the edge. Number two, Linux runs faster, uh, runs better, runs faster with older hardware. No need to upgrade your computer. Computer, That's generally true. It's nice to run variations of Linux such as XUbuntu or LUbuntu, uh, Linux uh, Fluxbox because it does not require uh, those versions do not require a lot of RAM and I think you can get away with some Linux operating systems with, with as little as 128 megabytes of RAM. Number three, Linux doesn't need defragmentation. Well again that's true that's the nature of the operating system of Linux it just doesn't need the defragmentation and, and if I'm wrong someone please correct me. Alright number four Linux has less bugs than Windows. Based on my experiences again based on solely my experience I found this to be the opposite. Now there aren't enough bugs in Linux for me to drop Linux altogether. It's the small things you know the power management uh, flash, uh, you know, flash performance, watching videos online sometimes crashes or freezes up. Uh, I have a Canon printer installed on this Linux, Linux Mint 10, and I thought I found drivers for it, but for the life of me, I cannot get my Canon, uh, Canon MP250 printer to work with Linux, so I basically gave up. There's some other issues too, but not enough for me to drop Linux altogether. So, one of the misconceptions that I seem to read a lot is that Linux, Linux has less bugs than Windows. That is not true for me. Alright, number five. Linux programs are free. Windows requires you to pay for updates. Well, most Linux programs are free and I don't recall ever paying for a Windows update or an update to my Windows operating system. It might be true that you may have to pay for updates or uh, certain upgrades to certain software for Windows and of course if you are getting a whole new version of Windows say Windows 8 when it comes out you may have to pay for that but for the updates I don't recall ever paying for an update. Number six, Linux handles system crashes easier. Uh, nah, for me it's about the same. If uh, Windows gets a virus, if I get a virus in Windows and it's a really bad one or bad couple of viruses and, and it really affects the whole system, yes, it will crash and I have to go in and clean it out or install the operating system. I've had several issues with Linux with freeze-ups. 
Uh, I remember doing a distribution upgrade from one Ubuntu to another. I forget which versions, and it just totally messed up my operating system. I will never do an operating system upgrade with Linux. I will just do a fresh install. I learned my lesson. Never again. So, if does Linux handle system crashes easier? Not in my case. Number seven. Uh, Linux is open source and involves lower costs than Windows. Well, what can I say as a Windows user? I would say this is generally true. Number eight, Linux has more choices of operating systems. Yes, and as a Windows user, this is both good and bad. If you are a Windows user, and I tell you to say, hey, check out the website distrowatch.com, and you look to the right, and you have a hundred different choices of choosing a Linux operating system. Does that really help a new user? I suppose I could say, well, just stick to the top 10 and go from there, but for me, this is both a plus and a minus for Linux. Having so many choices, literally hundreds, is not necessarily a good thing. Too much of anything, in my opinion, is not necessarily a good thing. And this is one of the problems where too many choices leads to a non-standardization of quality of any Linux operating system, in my opinion. Now, there are some fine, excellent Linux choices out there, such as my favorite Zorn OS 4 and Linux Mint 10 that I'm using here. So Windows users, lick it, listen up. Check out Linux Mint 10 or Zorn OS 4. But having lots of choices of Linux operating systems, yes, it's true, but it is not, in my Windows mind, it is not necessarily a good thing. All right, number nine, Linux is faster than Windows true but have you tried some bloated Linux operating systems lately have you tried a fully loaded KDE version uh, I don't know it seems to me that can be just as fast or just as slow as Windows 7 anyway in general sure Linux is faster than Windows but not always number 10 Linux is more customizable Yep, the latest version of KDE sure does look pretty. Um, again, this is just for looks. Uh, having a customizable operating desktop doesn't necessarily add to the stability, uh, doesn't add to the functionality or stability of the operating system itself. Now lastly, let me just say this. I dual boot. I enjoy using both Linux and Windows. Ultimately, the best advice I could give to any user, use what works. If you only enjoy using Linux, go for it. If you only enjoy using Windows, absolutely, I enjoy using both. But for someone to say, hey, you know, Windows gets viruses and it sucks, or Linux has bugs and it sucks, I don't know, having statements like that, I don't really think it helps either the Linux or Windows uh, community of users. You know, if, if something works, say it. If something doesn't work, you know, you can say it in a manner and then explain it. Like when I say that, you know, to me, Linux has more bugs than Windows, for me it does. But I will never drop Linux because I think it's a great uh, operating system depending on which choice of Linux Linux uh, Linux distribution that you use and in my case it's Linux Mint, Linux Mint 10 and Zorn OS 4 so once again in the end the best thing I can say is use what works okay well that's it that's the 10 things I wanted to mention about Windows versus Linux for 2011. If I missed anything important, please let me know. If I missed many things important, let me know, and I'll be happy to do a follow-up video for this. But for me, I'm a dual booter and I'm not changing anytime soon. To all the Linux developers out there who I'm sure spend a lot of time in making some fine versions of Linux, 
thank you coming from a Windows user and keep up the good work and I'm always looking forward to the next version of Linux Mint and Zorn OS 4 and Ubuntu so thanks again everybody for watching and as always I will catch you sometime in the Linux future bye